Hey everybody, it's Ron Caps. There's a lot of really good questions I've always wanted to ask other drivers, even drivers I competed with and against. This is a perfect opportunity for me to play a reporter and just have some fun, ask some questions that maybe they don't ask on a TV show. So what better place than here on Comp Plus to have a little fun with some other drivers? All right, so obviously I'm bored. I don't have a race car here, so. I'm right, mine? <laughs> That'd make Dom real happy. That'd start rumors, wouldn't it? Boy, wouldn't that start? <laughs> you made some, you made good run. It's okay. We're learning. Went down there. All right. Bobby Bennett, real famous. All right, so listen. Get up, Bobby. Throw all that <laughs> yesterday away. I had no energy until my race car goes down the and I still ain't got no energy. It's from being 100 years old. But I, I ain't telling people that no more. No? They're tired of hearing it. Every time I call him the goat, he thinks I'm calling him something bad. It's like, like it's an impeachment. Nobody wants to hear it no more. They don't care who's right or wrong. Hey, this is perfect because the question I was going, I asked Hagen, and really I've been to like six different drivers. When I drove for Don Perdome, and it goes back further than that, but he's the one that first kind of instilled that I need to eat certain somethings during the day or weekend or race day. Um, and, and you know, since I've known you, you took me under your wing when I was driving Top Fuel, and it's been it was coffee and donuts. And people laugh; they think the interviews when you said coffee and donuts, you just made it up to be funny. But that was your diet. Um, what about now? I mean, you've been through. I went back and watched. Uh, God, what was it called, Bobby? The the comp plus thing you did. Legend, Legend story when they it you know, shows your crash and the rehabilitation and all the stuff. You in the hospital. Um, it's got the great opening with with Rocky talking. And uh, so since then, I know you've been in the gym a lot. Instead of going to the bars like we used to, you're in the gym on the elliptical at night. I still drive by them. <laughs> so I don't forget where they're at. So, so what is your diet on a weekend? Let's say a race day. You eat a good breakfast in the morning. And what do you do? You know, these kids watching at home, these junior dragsters, they just run around all day. They don't care if they eat. They eat popcorn, they eat sugar, and jump in there. And, and they don't know the difference. But... For us, I know we all have our ways of going about a race day. What is uh, what is your day to, to make sure you're as good as you can be throughout the day into a final round? It ain't working, whatever the diet is. Look, I've been doing this, I'm going on 50 years. People don't know I raced dragsters and fuel alerts in the 60s. You know what I mean? I've been doing it a long time professionally, 40 years or better. But uh, the, there ain't no answer. It's I can give you this. It's kind of like trying to say, how do you find a sponsor? How do you find a sponsor? There, there ain't no real answer. You live it, and you chase it, and you throw enough, what I call shit on the wall, sooner, sooner or later the wall will get painted. And if you keep attacking it, somebody's gonna come. It's gonna happen, and that's what I've been doing all these years. But when you look at, at how to get up on race day, I've gone through a change of life. And midlife crises, I've gone through, um, so many things that I still try to do it the way I do it. N naturally, you should eat proper. N number two, and the guys with physiques like you and Hagen, you eat right. You do it right. But obviously, I don't. So I have to starve myself to get rid of it. And that, but I've done this balance for 40 years. And if I tried to change now and eat three meals a day, you know what I mean? I'd be so screwed up. I couldn't interview, I couldn't drive, couldn't do nothing. It changes your mindset. This is way too deep for an interview. I go to, I go to therapists about it. Now I go to doctors about it and say, can you talk to me? And after they're done, they're, they're screwed up so they can't help me because they're just talking to me. But what I'm saying is everyone's got to have their own way. And for some reason... I know, I'm asking you your way. Now I know... Every time I eat, I fall asleep. I'm going to get through the Bible. I've been working on it 40 years. Now, listen, this, and I just told this to Clay. When I drove for Snake, we were at the dinner with Jerry Ruth, and you know how those dinners are. And I'll, I'll never forget this. First year driving the Copenhagen car, and, and they, Snake and Ruth looked at me, and Snake said, Kid, a lion hunts better when he's hungry and his, and his belly's empty. And so that stuck with me ever since because you eat a big meal, your blood goes all the way to your stomach to help things digest. We, yeah, so if it goes to your stomach, the blood's not in your head as much as it should be. Now, I know you, a little bit of coffee, you, you find that balance where you need to be. And there's times I'll mellow yellow or Powerade. Still to this day, if I don't feel like I'm on or there's a morning, man, I didn't sleep good last night, there's a little bit of that. Monster energy. Monster energy. 
That makes me 20 years old. But my race car makes me 20. But what I'm saying is everyone has their own deal. Some people don't eat and aim because they, they got blood sugar problems. You know, uh, if they don't eat, they get screwed up. And the other day, you know, it was said to me, I said, man, I'm really tired. And I called my doctor. I said, is it because I ain't eating? He said, what happens when you eat? I said, I get real tired. You get worse? Well, then why change it? So I got to keep myself living on the edge. And I've learned how to balance that. Oh, I know when I go over center, I run around and I say stuff in interviews that I spend the rest of the day trying to take back. But you get caught up in it of, of, of that emotion of too much energy and you don't need it. And out there, you got to find the balance. And um, I've had days when I got all ready to go, to go race and I realized I went over center and I'm back in the trailer pounding water trying to calm down. I went in the trailer and I said, Ron Capps does great out there and he's always got his radios on and I don't listen to music and I'm a music freak. So I got all my <laughs> bought it all, got in the back seat of my truck, got all wound up and almost missed the session. I got so listening to music, I forgot to get dressed. And they said, what are you doing? You're not in the car. I said, I don't know if this is really good. The Beach Boys are humming here and it's really good. So everyone's got to find their own way. But let's, let's face it, it's better to eat. Nutrition is the right way. But you know, there's something else I learned. I went into my doctor once and I said, I got a problem and I was talking to my daughter Adra about it. I said, I know what I ought to eat. So I just cut out junk food and I went to everything right. You know, looked at that Atkins diet, did everything right. And I was so screwed up for a month, I couldn't function. And, and, and my daughter had said to me, well, you have to look at how you lived your whole life. I've been a junk food, food addict my whole life. I think, I, I think I'd won the last five championships if I hadn't to quit drinking. You, you think I ain't thinking about it? Okay. No, okay. I was thinking that too. For a little over a year. But what I'm saying, it changed my personality. But, I was, but I'm running out of time, so I had to get myself back. You know, I, don't, I can't party. I got to go to the other night. Hey, come on. You want to have? No. Reinhardt, come on, Forge. Come on in and have a beer. No. Oh, that's right. You don't drink. Well, come on in and visit. And I said, no, I'm going to bed. He goes, it's a quarter to six. <laughs> like, you know, it's a quarter to six. I go in there and get a bath, but I'm sleeping by 7.30 or 8. That ain't normal. And then I wake up at 5 in the morning, yeah. and that's screwy. So I become, now I'm a... Bedtime's underrated. I find that as I'm getting older, I, I love getting into bed now. <laughs> I've got a wife that looks like yours. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, i got a pretty wife, too. That ain't okay, what I mean. Hold on. Now, listen, I, listen. What I'm saying is, is that I don't want to get in bed because every time I go to get under the covers, I go, <laughs> goodbye, Walls. This may be my last shot. So, no, I'd rather stay up all night, but I can't. Okay, Did listen. Can, no, hold on. I'm just, I'm rambling. I, okay, real quick. And you made me think of this. I haven't asked anybody else this. I, you know, when you're a kid, I used to have these recurring dreams that I would get up late and I would miss my home room, like when we were in grade school or high school. I mean, terrible, and to me, nightmares. That you're trying to wake up or you can't run to get to the bus or you just can't get to class. Running in slow motion. Slow motion. I still I, have them to this day. I have them. I've never said this to anybody, but I have these nightmares. Well, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm missing getting in the car for first round and to the point where I woke up late at the hotel and nobody let me know and they're running first round it's 1105 or or I'm trying to get to the track to get in the car do you ever have still this day like just racing type of nightmares that wake you up in the middle of the night I used to have the dream that I was running in slow motion I couldn't get away and there was a bunch of girls in bikinis chasing me <laughs> but after a while you realize that ain't gonna happen no what I'm getting at is when I was a kid, I had an art class, and we did all the dinosaurs in a year. You know, the T-Rex, the brontosaurus, all of it. And yet, my grandma's house, I can't hardly remember, but I can remember, I can't remember nothing, but I can remember 6220 Loveland in Bell Gardens. That's where my grandma was, and I'd go there and stay. But I used to have nightmares of running around the living room Two my nightmares, and I ain't kidding, I shouldn't say this, but I've told my shrink this. I have two returning nightmares, okay? One is I'm running around her house with a T-Rex chasing me. Well, something from that making little miniature, uh, you know, dinosaurs and stuff. And, and for some reason running, I don't know what. Maybe she beat me with a stick, I don't know. But I have that, that recurring nightmare, and it never goes away. I'll, 
I'll have it and in six months I'll go by and I'll have it again. I go, where did that come from? Something in your subconscious talks to you. The other one is showing up to the racetrack late. I'm on top of a mountain. I know it's down there, but there's no road down there. And I'm running down the hill in the car. I climb the fence and I leave the car and I'm running on foot. And that is a fear of not because we love this NHRA drag racing so much. It makes us mental that I got to get to the racetrack. I got to start that motor and I get there and the car's in the staging lanes. Oh, I'm going to be okay. And then I see them towing back. And you wake up with that like, oh my God, what happened? And you're okay. You own your car. I don't. And I have that dream and like somebody else they had to put in the car last minute. It, it is the I'm so glad to hear you have that because oh, I, I thought it was the only one. But that's an ongoing thing. And it really is kind of weird that, that, that you get it. But it's always like not making that session. And why? Because the most important thing in your life next to your kids and your wife is making that session to qualify. And now I ain't going to make it. And, you know, I was off with a sponsor and I was doing something. You don't even know what you're doing in a dream. You know, but I went to a shrink about it and I said I wake up in sweats and I'm screwed up for hours and then I find out what's depressing me ain't even real it's just something stupid this whole interview all right I gotta, I gotta, hey. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, let me say this I got when you jumped the fence in your dream did you do better than you did at Seattle oh that was low the two most times I embarrassed myself was in my early days I jumped the fence at Pomona and Wally Farks was in the staging lanes and caught me trying to get in free and he threw me out. Actually, I always say he threw me out, but he let me come in the races because I was young and he knew I loved it so much. And he loved that somebody loved it. I said, someday when I got money, I'll pay to be, I'll be a racer someday. And he laughed, went on. All right. All right. Okay. okay. The, the, hold on. What was the, the, second, one the second question would go to you, Ron. So. Did you have that recurring nightmare where a puckered up John Force came to kiss you on the lips? No, it's, let me tell you, I get more asked about that. Do you know that, sh that race happened to be the highest rated Fox NHRA drag racing show all season long? See all the women that just come that broke, got, <laughs> of all time. got their hearts broke because of you? That, oh, I, had a, I could have kissed him any time I wanted and then old fat stupid Force kissed him. Now, it was just a day of emotion, and I've loved you since you drove for Perdome, my hero. Yeah, it was a special day. Yeah, I didn't mind. Even though I'm going through therapy, I, I didn't mind. Yeah, well, listen. The Up in the fence was, was, was probably the dumbest thing because I'm just too old to do that stuff. But, you know, age is all in your mind. So I just, I, I've got, I got to warm up. They want, okay. I'm sorry. One last one, quick. I know you love movies. What's the last movie? I know because you've dragged me into a middle-of-the-day movie. Um, watch a matinee. What's the last movie you went to? The, the, the last... Not at home, in a theater. Okay. The movie that I loved was uh, Chevrolet and Ferrari. Ford and Ferrari. I, I know. I know where you're going with that. Protected myself. Loved it. Already seen it three times. And then I went and seen one for reasons. Because my therapist said, go see the movie Joker. With oh, me. yeah. And I walked out of there and... Out there, huh? I went and found a staircase I could run up and down because I am nuts and I'm going out nuts and I'm starting really to believe it. I always thought I was sane and it's just part of my act, but I realize now it's too late. Okay, love All you, right. Ron Caps. All right. Get your old hot rod down here. I ain't yep. racing. I ain't racing without you. All right. Thanks, John.